Hi, Brian. Hi, Keith. How are you? I'm doing good. I'll be doing a lot better if we uh, try some of this wine. Some of that Cabernet? Some of this Cab. We're going to try it for them. Should I show this to everybody? I think so. But first, let's tell them who we are. Oh, okay. This is DenverWineGuy.com. I'm Keith. I'm Brian. And welcome to the show today. We're going to talk about Dama Wines out of Washington State. Walla Walla Valley. There you go. And it, Dama is short for Don, Don, and Mary. And Mary. They um, two gals. You know, you don't find many wineries owned and operated by women. Why is that? You know, I, I think you'll start seeing it more. But it's, it's just something in you know in the past that you know we just never really saw a lot of. It's it's. I like it. I only ask that question because that's usually something you would do to me. Just kind of put me on a spot like that. <laughs> and you say, why is that? There is no reason. You know, but, you know, the women, they're, they're getting involved in all kinds of stuff, you know. So, um, so yeah, Walla Walla Valley, my, one of my favorite areas in, in our country for, for wines. I mean, I love the style of Walla Walla Valley wines. You know why? Why is that? Because I think they... They do. They have a lot to do with um, Bordeaux and you know how the wines from Bordeaux are. I think they craft their wines typically after Bordeaux wines in France. Hold on, hold on. So you're not talking about the fact that it's on the what is it, the 56th parallel? Is it? You're you're saying which which stretches across over to Bordeaux? So and and that that's kind of odd, isn't it? No, it's actually, it's very common. Well, I shouldn't say common, but Not you know, common. It's, it's something that uh, I, I've done quite a bit. Look at some of the great producing regions in the world and just take the globe and spin it. And, and you'll see that, you know, parts of California, you know, uh, Oregon. Yeah, right. but, but then if you look in the southern hemisphere, try doing the same thing, places like Victoria in Australia, and you flip it around the globe, there's, there's places that are missing, and, and, and I wonder... Geez, how come no one's not tried, you know, growing Blame. grapes there? Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't know if that's the reason. I, I think there's a there, there's a lot of French influence, uh, wine making influence in in the Washington State. That's for sure. I mean, they um, they're definitely very different than your California ones. That's that's no doubt about that. So today we have the Dama Cowgirl Cab, 2005 out of Washington State, Walla Walla Valley. Wine we've never tasted before. They sent it to us, wanted our opinion, and so we're gonna we're gonna give it. We're gonna give our opinion. Yep. How's 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 the color? Well, the light's kinda hard in here, but you yeah. know, it looks uh, like a bluish purple. So you know in the last segment we were talking about, you know, the colors of the wine that would be indicative of uh, this coming from uh, a warm climate because it's got that, that blue purple color to it. But Walla Walla is not warm, so it could be uh, warm vintage. It could be, yeah, I'm not sure of 2005, but I love the, the nose on it. Man, it just has really great fruit. I love the, it's not, it's not closed at all. Um, it's you know, it's definitely got that plum thing going on, a little bit of a molasses thing to me. Um, hmm. I'm impressed so far. Let's put it that way. Um, I like it too. I, I, I like this one. It's just, it's got a firm finish to it. You know, the um, I don't want to say there's gripping tannins, but you know, it's um, I think it would benefit from being open a little bit. I do too. I. But it, 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 it classic cassis character. Yep. Yeah. Um, it lets you know it lets you know it's there. A lot of people, you know, I find a lot of people in the wine business love wines that grab you. I mean, it's um, well, no, you know, it's not a it's not a cocktail wine, that's for sure. I think um, a lot of people, and maybe this is what you're getting at. Americans, anyway, tend to like wines that are fruit driven. A lot of big fruit mm -hmm. on the palate, which is why. Australia has always been so popular in the last 10 years. Right. Explosive fruit. So I like the way this is in the mouth. It shows really good fruit. I like the finish on it. Um, I think that 
The finish could be a little bit longer. I think it quits just a little bit too soon for me um, in the back. And I'm going to try again just to make sure I'm right. Okay. Um, you know, I wonder if that uh, begs the question, do we uh, explain the difference between a length and a line and the finish and a line? Oh, well, <laughs> while you're spinning, should I just go ahead and do that? Go for it, Brian. Um, you know, if you hear people using terminology such as that in, in examining wines or at a wine tasting, the length of the wine is the the taste that you have um, uh, at, at the back or when you're when you just get through swallowing. The uh, the finish of a wine is actually uh, the descriptor of how long that flavor stays in your mouth on your palate after long after you swallow the wine. So you think the finish and the length? Um, I definitely find a nice base of acidity there. Again, I like the acidic part in wine. It will pair well with food. What do you think of the finish of it? Um, How does it finish for you? I think uh, I agree with you. The finish on this wine, I think, uh, fall, falls a little short. But, um, you know, it's, it's an excellent wine. I mean, it's... Uh, Concentrated, full body. It's mm -hmm. a robust cab. It is. It's price range. Price range on the shelf is between 19.99 and 24.99. So um, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna rate this wine and. and uh, we're gonna rate this with some stars. No. Numbers. No. Yes. Yes. Not glasses. Not stars. We're gonna do a hundred point system. We are. One do a hundred. Okay. I'm what do you let, think? I'm going to let you... Well, okay. You want me to go first? No, I, I just because you, you, you threw me off guard there. I wasn't. I hadn't sized it up mentally. Do you need a little in, bit more in, in your glass? In, in numbers at this point. I um, enjoy it. You know, um, I would say uh, I'd give it 89 points out of 100. 89? Yeah. You're going to give it higher than that, huh? I can tell by your, your expression of the wine. No, I'm not. I'm going to say 89. I'm going to say 89, and we'll put a plus on it. But not 90, because 90, I expect more on the finish with a 90. I, I would agree. And I would agree. Um, it falls short, like I said earlier, about on the finish, and so I'm going to 89, 89 plus. It's definitely, I feel, worth the uh, $20 on the shelf. About. I mean, if it's 22, that's fine, too. So, um I think I'm looking forward to trying some of their other wines. I know they do some, some, um, some, some Syrah and some Chardonnay. So, but I like the Cowgirl Cabernet. If you're interested in finding more out about Dama Wines, you can look at that at uh, www.damawines.com. How do you spell Dama? D-A-M-A. Damawines.com. That would be domination. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it for today. Thanks for watching DenverWineGuy.com. I'm Keith. I'm Brian. Enjoy. <laughs>